Hello and welcome everyone to the Fiwer eGovernment Day. My name is Christina Brandstetter. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Fiwer and member of the Board of Officers of uh, Fiwer Foundation. On behalf of the Foundation, I would like to thank you all for joining us today for this exciting event with the title From eGovernment to eGovernance Open Platforms for Public Value Creation. Before I'm jumping though into the official introduction, let me go over some uh, quick housekeeping with you all. We ask uh, for all attendees to mute themselves, please, and to turn the cameras off throughout the presentations to avoid connectivity issues. Also, this is a live event and it will be recorded. By attending this event, you agree to the recording, which will be made available on the Fiverr YouTube channel afterwards. So you will be able to revisit all the content whenever and from where you like. Lastly, this event will include two Q&A sessions. So we ask you to drop any questions you have throughout the event into the chat if possible and adding who the question is addressed to. And um, we will then do really our best uh, to incorporate your questions into these sessions and bring um, immediate answers. For those of you who are not familiar with us yet, Fiverr Foundation is a nonprofit organization headquartered in Berlin, but actually active all around the globe that drives the definition and encourages the adoption of open standards. We're using open source technologies and reference architectures to ease the development of smart digital solutions across multiple domains. So not only e-government, but quite some more, including the areas uh, we will be discussing, of course, today. And actually, I have read in a post just yesterday morning, um, a nice statement, at least an interesting statement that said, most people fear disruption more than they fear destruction. So why our communities need a new digital deal now? And I thought many of these answers actually will be given today to this quite interesting and surely also a little bit provocative statement. And it tells us already a little bit now, it all comes down at the end to people, uh, to citizen involvement as well. And so we want to have a deep dive today into questions like, to what extent are nations tackling global trends and what does digital technology really mean for the public sector? Also, how big is the potential of digital technologies to shift the way the public sector operates, uh, deliver services to citizens and offer strategies for decision makers to at the end accelerate development goals? And last but not least, also, what challenges do public administrations, private companies, and of course, again, our citizens really face in their daily challenges when moving within the public sector? So it's a lot of interesting questions. And just want to make sure that you know that this event makes part of a series of Fiber Domain Days. Uh, so we're not only looking at e-government, but also at smart cities, health, energy, tourism mobility and water. And today our special is public administrations and how we can deliver effective and inclusive public services. Again, welcome uh, to this uh, Fiwery Government Day and uh, uh, join me to welcome in Flavia uh, Marzano uh, that will be our moderator, uh, Joao Rodriguez Frade uh, from the European Commission uh, Joachim van der Bogert from Crosslang, um, um, uh, Stefano de Panfilis from uh, the Fiber Foundation, Juan Joyero from the Fiber Foundation, um, uh, Flavio Bono from the European Commission, uh, Juan Echevarria Cuenca from uh, the city of Santander, Andreas Lynn Weber from Unity, that will, um, the use case will be with the city of uh, Paderborn, um, David Bueno from the city of Malaga, and uh, Ulrich Kalle, uh, from CEO of the Fiber Foundation, and Christina, that will do the, the, the closing remarks. Now, um, I would like to, to, to introduce uh, 
Flavia eh, eh, Marzano, she is professor at Lynn Campus University of Digital Transformation and head of Master Smart Public Administrations. Eh, she is also former city councillor of Rome for Smart City, former member of the board eh, of Lynn Campus University. Eh, thank you, Flavia. Um, the stage uh, is uh, yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Christine. Thank you, Angeles. I love really your sharpness, so I'm very happy uh, to be here. Uh, it's a great opportunity to moderate this uh, great panel, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think that um, the, the global pandemic uh, has made us understand very clearly, very clearly that technologies for citizens, for businesses, even for public administration are increasingly essential for the uh, uh, the challenges we faced and we will face. As perfectly described in the presentation of this conference, digital technologies have an enormous potential to shift and switch the way the public administration, the public sector operates, delivers services to citizens and offers strategies for decision makers. The challenge in public administration is based not only on reducing the sociological, economical, cultural and gender digital divide and obviously also the infrastructure, infrastructure one, but also on the ability to politicians of politicians and the, and the executive to understand and adopt new technologies such as uh, AI, machine learning, blockchain, IoT, and have long-term visions. So in my speech, I will um, try at least to describe open problems and I try to give some solutions. So now I share my video and you see uh, shortly my slide. Tell me please if it is everything okay with the slideshow. It's okay? Yes, we Great. can see it. Great. So, um, well, I'm fanatic for acronyms, so you'll see some acronyms here. The first one is DOT, which is Digital and Open Transformation after Coronavirus. I call myself a why noter, you see why. Well, I'm a computer scientist and I'm working on digital transformation since uh, years. And uh, in this uh, difficult time, we have to look further. We have to understand how can we go on. And probably it is a great opportunity uh, to change planning right now the future development. Technologies create uh, a new ecosystem, right? But what do we need? We require competences, strictness, ethics. Why not think about AI and ethics and discipline? We do not have to adapt technologies to processes, but we have to redefine it, to change roles, to change uh, work environment, to listen, to listen, to listen, and uh, be an early adopter. Well, sorry about that, it's just a fun joke, but I'm a computer scientist, as I said, and during the, uh, the quarantine, I had a hard experience, let's say, starting from my previous one, and uh, I was working in uh, Roma Capitale, and I thought it was the time to do something else for, for citizens who should stay home. So I wrote a, a, a guide and online, for online services uh, of Rome, so they could use all the online services through this guide. Another uh, manual I wrote during the coronavirus uh, uh, quarantine is uh, a digital self-defense manual. Just some simple suggestion for a more conscious use of smartphone, social network, password, apps, email, chat. I saw so many, well, incredible things. I, I'm, I'm quite sure you, you saw the similar during uh, mm, online conferences. So I wrote this, uh, this, e this small ebook. And I'm ha happy to say that in Rome, uh, Fireware is there and they will uh, create some dashboard for decision support. Another thing I'm proud of uh, to do to, 
well, what I did in Rome is uh, I installed 14,000 LibreOffice licenses and uninstalled about 8,000 8, uh, Office licenses were not in use for more than six months. Such is life. So, what can we do after coronavirus? Uh, I hope we will not take uh, 10 years, maybe not 10 months. What should we do? What should be concerned about uh, digital transformation? Usability and accessibility, do not forget that. Public website should be usable and accessible to everybody. Open data, open source, simplification of regulation. I don't know in your country, but for sure in Italy, we have too many rules, too many laws. Digital inclusiveness, open government in all his phases, so participation, uh, transparency, accountability, infrastructure, as we said before, PPP, and agile life, job, and relationship. So we should turn problems into opportunity. Think about the teleworking we did so far. We should switch it from teleworking to smart and agile working. So we have uh, to be able to define rules, training, uh, tools. We use a one. Well, in my in the last six months, uh, I, I was using 20 different tools for video conferences. So probably we should try to find an easy one for public administration, maybe open source, and use this. So this is an opportunity. Let's take it. And I'd like to switch from digital first to digital only. I hope and I'm quite sure that it works. Innovation. Uh, innovation and not just technologies, but new vision. And vision are the base for change, but we need also skills, incentives, resources, and action plan, if you want really to change. But there is a lot of common mistake we should try at least to avoid. The not invented here syndrome, I saw it so many times. Another one is, we always acted this way. I've heard it a thousand times. Working in silos is not just a question of public administration in the public in enterprises is the same. Working in silos is a strong mistake we should avoid. Another one is the finger of the moon. So what we see is mainly based on what we look for. Uh, the fifth one is the user are considered as mere faceless objects. They are not. They are not. Why? Look at the users. This is the user and there is the design. So we should do a co-design to avoid uh, this kind of mistake. And many times experts fail because, even if they are experts, because they are experts in, I'm sorry, the past version of the word. It happens. The last one is, at least in Italy, as I said, but Tacitus said 2,000 years ago in Latin, uh, in the most corrupt state, uh, there are too many laws. We should simplify that in Italy, at least, I don't know, in your country. Another strong issue is about the global, global gender gap. Even in technologies, I know, see this picture, it's very clear. The ICT specialist in blue and uh, uh, ICT women specialist in orange. Women are strongly underrepresented in the digital economy. We should start from that, not just because women have some more rights, of course they, we have it, but also because the world will be better using differences. We are different and our way to see problem is different. That is, is what in an ecosystem uh, uh, it's important to do. I'm still quite uh, positive, I would like uh, to say that we are lucky. We are lucky because we are in, in the middle between two different worlds. We are in what we the, 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 the biologists call an ecotone. This is an, a great opportunity. The ecotone, in fact, is easily a, a transition, a transition environment between two different ecosystems. We are exactly there before COVID and after COVID. We are in the middle and we, it, it is now the time to do something. Having, of course, the ability to think outside the box and having new vision, yet another acronym, I'm sorry. View from different perspectives, looking the problem from the other side of the prisma. 
involve bottom-up people, citizen, customers, share, share knowledge, share ideas, software, data, imagine, not constraining thinking, organize and navigate. Users are, should be involved because they are unique, sensible, engageable and reactive. Of course, I'll bite some, some attention. Engagement is a value and creates value. Technologies are not always the solution. Participation, I pay attention to that too, through technologies often, often reproduces the dynamic already existing in the relationship between politicians and citizens. Awareness. As a citizen, we have some rights, we should be aware of it. As a politician, we have some duty and we should be aware of it. Another strong issue we would like to talk about is the uh, 17 uh, SDGs. There are, especially in, in today, we should think, uh, talk about the, at least the fifth, the ninth, and uh, the 11th, but all the others should be involved in our discussion today. Smart city for all. So digital inclusion, as we said, but we should be able to use indicator. So it's essential for public administration to be able to work with concrete, measurable goals. What is still missing, that's in my opinion, we should be able to discuss it later. The mutual trust, first of all, between decision maker and citizen, politician and decision and citizen, and more laicity. That's my experience, at least. So new question and new answer. Without the awareness of new dynamics, we risk uh, a simple quantitative extension of the old one. So we, we should change something. The services must be redesigned, totally redesigned, with the uh, competences and the question, the new question we do have. So what can we do? Um, Multi-stakeholder forum, for instance, participation, participation in the definition and monitoring of strategic decision, opening an online platform for the proposal of new ideas. Of course, involving all the stakeholders, the, the uh, triple helix of Excovis uh, teaching us something. And another issue is the deal, democracy, empowerment, accessibility, and literacy. A deal, but shaken, not steered, I would say, uh, let me play with words. So sustainability and resilience, openness and transparency, participation and collaboration, connectivity, yes, but also creativity. And that's why I say that I'm a why notter. I do prefer why notter to yes butter. And now uh, we should look not back in anger, nor forward in fear, but around, around in awareness. The consciousness that we are in this ecoton and we have the right to do something new and to change in the right direction. So thank you, thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. I, I've finished my presentation. I'm very proud to, to continue. And uh, as you seen already, uh, we have some great speaker. I'm sorry to everybody for the pronunciation of your names. Uh, I hope you will pronounce it in the right way after me. So the first great speaker is the head of sector building blocks in the European Commission, Joao, 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 I don't know, Rodriguez Frey. And, they, and they, the title is Transforming European Public Administration with CEF Building Blocks. Thank you very much. And your floor is yours. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to give a presentation about uh, the transformation of European public administrations. Um, and of course, we always come with a story of doing it with uh, building blocks. Um, I'm very happy that uh, we continue to have this uh, relationship with uh, Fireware and the Fireware Foundation. Uh, we have been working together since 2018, um, so it's uh, quite a long time already. Um, and uh, of course, the Context Broker is one of our building blocks. Um, 
I will try to build on what uh, Flavia just presented. Um, so uh, I will start with some uh, background because not everyone knows about what we are trying to do uh, as European Commission together with the member states to achieve some of the things that uh, Flavia just uh, mentioned now. Um, then I will talk a bit about this idea of transforming public administrations and why do we do it with uh, building blocks. And I will end my presentation with a call to action. So try to involve you in this uh, transformation process and give you some um, additional links and pointers so that you can uh, look for information by yourself and uh, probably uh, help us uh, spread the word. So that is really uh, what I would like you uh, to do following my, my presentation. So background, let's start from uh, the top. And uh, I've actually changed my slides uh, just slightly um, because I was um, thinking to immediately start with the relationship that we have with uh, with fireware. But indeed, we live uh, in uh, strange and uh, challenging times, um, which I think we all uh, have been uh, affected by in some way. Uh, so I decided to start with some uh, few key messages but that in my opinion are exactly what we need to discuss today um so i looked at uh, the title of um, the event today and the objective of the event and it was really uh, stressing about transforming uh, the public sector using digital technology um and my feeling is that sometimes we try to separate the public sector from the rest of society and try to create this idea between public and, and private sector. Um, now, in reality, we cannot really make the separation of public sector and, and private sector. And the main reason is that government is a very important intermediary of many of the transactions happening in society. So if you think about the many life events you go through, government is typically present in one way or the other. So when you buy a house, they will ask you for documents that are typically issued by governmental entities. When you buy products, you're looking for some assurance that that product is conformant to some rules, so forth and so on. So government is present in society in one way or the other, many times because government issues documents and cards that are ensuring the trust between entities, some other times because there is regulation that ensures the security of a product or a service. So when we talk about transforming government, we have to talk about looking at society as a whole. So whatever we do on the government side will have an impact on society, hopefully positive impact on society. Uh, it will impact citizens, businesses and public administrations. And this is why I was since the very beginning promoting the idea of um, teaming up with Fireware, because uh, we are all here pretty much trying to do the same, trying to contribute to the digital transition in Europe by bringing technology that improves the life of citizens, that make transactions easier between businesses, and that make public administrations more modern. Um, one of the main concerns of the Commission, and I believe of all the member states, so when I talk about Commission, of course, we're talking about Europe and the member states, is that when we look at the digital world, um, we are moving what I just had said there. So we are moving this role of government of ensuring trust in whatever transactions are happening between the different actors in society to online. And as you know, online, we need digital trust as much as we need in the physical world, if not even more, 
because when you have documents that are now digital, uh, they're not so difficult to fake, right? So fraud can become a problem. Cybercrime, as you know, is a challenge. So this transition to digital that Flavia was uh, mentioning has to help us also create a trustworthy digital society and government has a very important role to play in, in, in this transition. The second aspect is exactly where we find ourselves today. Um, all member states have been uh, uh, hardly hit by, by the COVID crisis. On one hand, of course, the sanitary crisis. Now, of course, the economy is also suffering. So the point I would like to make is, and you know that, is that government is an engine for economic recovery, and we can use this economic recovery to also um, boost this societal change towards digital and also think about the green transition. And all these elements are present in the communication of the Commission that is named Shaping Europe Digital Future, that the link is down there, that I would um, invite you all to, to have a look, because these ideas are, are very important to Europe, um, but again, to all of us as, as citizens and actors of society. So we are trying to build a digital society in Europe that is trustworthy, that works for people, and that contributes to the green transition that is one of the major challenges, I would say, for our future. Um, so these are really the key messages that I bring. Um, and now I will go to more technical aspects um, and how we are actually trying to, to do this and to achieve this. As you know, when we try to shape the digital future of Europe, uh, the Commission and the Member States have a role to play there. Um, and I would say they have two main tools to do this. So on one hand, of course, we have regulation. Uh, we need to create a new regulatory framework for the digital age. Uh, you all know about, I believe, some of the regulations that are mentioned uh, in this slide. So we have, on one hand, the whole discussion, the big discussion about privacy. And um, of course, as the GR there, we have also the EIDAS regulation, which is extremely important for mutual recognition of digital identity, digital signatures, and other trust services. Um, we are trying in Europe to implement something called the once only principle to allow data to uh, be shared across borders in a trusted way by member states. And of course, we have an interoperability framework that we like to call EIF. So all these are regulations, soft and harder regulations that help us promote this idea of a trustworthy digital society and that are extremely important for the digital age. We need new regulations and we need to continue to work on this side uh, to achieve this. But the Member States and the Commission, they also do more than just creating regulations because we can also accelerate the digital transformation through funding. So you all know that um, there are going to be funds available to the Member States uh, with the re European Recovery Plan. One of the elements will be the digital element, so they can use these funds to boost their digital capacity. So funding is extremely important. Programs like the Connecting Euro Facility that I've been working on, but also H2020 and other programs. Another element that is less known is that as part of this digital transformation, with the Commission, we promote the idea of reusable solutions. So when the member states are going through their digital transformation, um, it's important that they don't reinvent the wheel. So what we are trying to do, together with entities like Fireware, is to promote open reusable solutions, meaning solutions that are based on standards and technical specifications that promote a competitive single market 
with different providers of software, but that allow interoperability across the member states because we are, of course, very concerned and want to have a digital single market. So the single market, as you know, is a very important engine for economic growth in the union. And most of these transactions um, are going to be online. So we need to continue to have a competitive digital single market and interoperability contributes to that. So we are also promoting the so-called reusable solutions based on open standards that sometimes are named as building blocks. Um, so this is why back in 2018, when um, we were uh, looking to expand the number of reusable solutions, part of the Connecting Europe facility, Connecting Europe facility is one of the programs of the union to support the member states in going digital. We reached out to Fireware and uh, we had a discussion on how could we leverage the work that had already been made by Fireware uh, in CEF, in the Connecting Europe facility. Um, and that led to a discussion with the member states and a selection of the context broker as one of the open solutions that would be promoted through the Connecting Europe facility funding program, which is one of the many funding programs that the Commission has and uh, the one that I'm currently involved in. And in 2018, this is the screenshot of that page from the Fireware website, where it was announced that Fireware would become one of the building blocks of the Connecting Europe facility. So what does this mean? It means that if you visit the CEF digital website, not now, but after this event, um, you will see that the context broker appears as one of the several reusable solutions that we are promoting, meaning that we are giving grants for member states to implement these solutions. And we are also, from the Commission side, giving actual support, technical support for them to deploy and use these solutions. So we promote the solution, we give a financial incentive in the form of a grant, and we also have teams that can support the member states in implementing the solution so that the solution works for the benefit of citizens, businesses, and public administrations. As you can see here, Context Broker is not the only solution that we promote. We have several others, such as e-signature, electronic ID, e-archiving, invoicing. What is important here is that the solutions are all of them based on open standards. And this is the most important thing. And most of them are uh, already quite present in the private sector. And also they are provided by different vendors, software vendors. So if we have open solutions, it means that we can have different implementations of the same solution and that the member states can have ample choice when they decide to implement it. And that's something that we have been doing with Fireware is to really promote the standard underpinning the context broker so that we can have more options when it comes to the actual software that is implementing those, those specifications. Um, so moving on, uh, I will leave you here a very a busy slide, but to show you that if we put together all the reusable solutions based on this idea of open standards coming from the Connect Neuro facility, but also from the ISA program, that is another program of the commission promoting the same idea of uh, open standards, open solutions, we cover these two elements that I was just talking about. So on one hand, um, the trust uh, aspect, which is here represented by solutions like electronic ID, electronic delivery, e signature, or blockchain. So, in case you are a public or private entity wanting to reuse any of these solutions, they are there on the website completely for free. And we point you for both open source and also um, other options that. Uh, commercial and, and uh, cloud-based solutions that you can um, find and, and, and potentially buy, but you can also build 
a solution based on these open standards. So this is the trust element. And then we have also the other element, which is to use the smart governance and data management solutions to provide innovative services to citizens and, and businesses. So there we have the context broker, the archiving, core vocabularies, the core service vocabulary, and many others. Um, so I invite you to, of course, look at the, I would say, very rich portfolio of solutions that we have available. Um, and you can always, of course, count on us, on our teams, to help you in the selection and then to discover what is the solution able to do and how you could eventually start a project, um, a small pilot or an implementation project, uh, leveraging what is already in there for you to reuse. So uh, we, we can support you in, in that journey as well. Um, moving on then to the transformation aspect. So how do we see this in the, let's say, years to come? And uh, what is actually the end game behind all this? Uh, so th this is uh, not an official position of the, of the commission, but it's a nice visual way for us to understand where we come from and where do we want to go and why uh, initiatives or let's say now it's a really uh, foundation. So uh, the Fiber Foundation can contribute to this idea and its members. So we, of course, when we talk about public administrations, we start from the physical aspect. So a public administration was uh, a physical place where you would go uh, wait in line and get the document and slowly but surely started to move online when the public administrations moved online and not only public administrations but also the private entities we saw this creation of, of silos uh, what Flavia just mentioned before so we have this idea of a stovepipe model so we have different websites that we go to if we are more on a messaging world, we have different access points that receive our messages. So everything is different depending on the public administration or the sector. Um, and that has caused, of course, problems when it comes to share data and use the data in smart ways, because these silos, they are barriers for data to be shared or services to be accessed, uh, because everyone has different um, identities, uh, there are different ways of doing things. It becomes extremely complicated. This is why we have been promoting the idea of common solutions and the creation of platforms that open up the silos and open them up across borders, because this is the interest, of course, from the Commission side, is that we have interoperability across borders and across sectors. So by promoting the common solutions, we are trying to break the silos, because if all let's say sectorial platforms and member state platforms implement these solutions they will be able to talk to one another they will be able to share data and their services will be accessible across borders and also across sectors the next step is this idea of the data space i will not be, be having time to go very deep into it but of course when we open up the silos what we will be able to do is to exploit data from the different sectors and be able to access the services from the different sectors in completely new ways and that will allow but, us dear, dear Jean, have, um, sorry? we can sorry we can give two more minutes um because it's really really interesting but maybe we can try to yeah. stay a little bit and thank you thanks very much oh, yeah um thank you. and then uh once this is done uh it comes the the idea of fireware with uh, smart solutions by using things like the context broker to provide new innovative services and this is the journey that uh, we are currently undergoing together with fireware and what we want to do is simply to move away from the stovepipe model that we all know and uh, don't like to something like this where we see that all these components will support the creation of platforms that have both national components, but also these reusable solutions that are ready to connect across borders and across sectors, creating, of course, then a full data space where data can be shared and services accessible. So this is a summary. I'm not going into great detail here, 
of what we actually see as a transformation. So we are moving away from sectors. We are thinking about cross sector. We are moving away from this idea of the vertical value creation to go to an ecosystem value creation. We are moving away from common custom specifications to open standards and from like one size fits all approach and to a more service design and user centric approach. And we are doing this with the ecosystem. So it means that, again, this is not about public and private. This is about all of us together. So we promote the adoption of these solutions also by the private sector, also by SMEs and startups. And we have uh, created a challenge actually to accelerate the adoption of these common solutions, either as a service provider or as a, as a company by startups and SMEs, because they're extremely important for Europe as they constitute the majority of um, the private sector, if you actually look at it. Um, so how can you help? And these are my last slides. Um, we have been quite successful. Uh, we have been monitoring the adoption of these building blocks. We are currently seeing that uh, actually we don't know about many of the initiatives already reusing them. So the ones we know about are now over 200 implementation projects across Europe uh, and they continue to grow. Um, we have uh, created similar to Fireware success stories. So if you go to the website Self Digital, you will see that we have a number of success stories explaining how different sectors are implementing the building blocks. Um, I'm just showing here one, I would say, um, coming from the context broker side. And of course, uh, how context broker has helped to address and respond to the COVID crisis. You can have a look at it afterwards. And we want to leave you a message. So we are, of course, in difficult times and we have to cooperate. And going again to this idea of the news, actually yesterday I was looking at the news and says, one very important element of addressing the COVID crisis is cooperation. Cooperation is fundamental. So we also want you to help us spread the word. Um, I leave you here uh, some ideas. So if you know about some project, national or let's say cross-border project, tell them about the reusable solutions, tell, me, tell, them, tell them about the building blocks, send them the link. You can also follow us, of course, on social media. We have here the tweet, uh, Twitter handler and uh, our LinkedIn group and our um, email address. So drop us an email as well and we can continue this, this discussion. So thank you very much for inviting us again. I will not be able to stay uh, with you beyond three o'clock, but it was really a pleasure to give this presentation. And I'm extremely happy for this cooperation since 2018 with the Fireware Foundation. And I hope it continues beyond the Connecting Europe facility. As you know, there will be a new program coming up, Digital Europe. And uh, we are, of course, interested in continuing to um, this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very useful and great presentation. Uh, we have probably some questions for you, but if you leave, I don't know whether there is a possibility to do it now. I don't know if you have to leave. There is a question in the chat. Uh, if uh, Is there any effort to build the coherence between the sustainable developmental goals of the United Nations and the objective of digital open system in public administrations? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so you will not find them clearly mapped to one another. Um, as I mentioned, what is interesting is that um, if you look at the recent communications by the Commission, more and more what we see is that the green transition and the digital transition are somehow more and more reinforcing one another. And that is uh, a very, I would say, significant uh, uh, change that will help us, I would say, to use um, all these technologies, uh, including the context broker, for that purpose of, of the green transition of a more sustainable environment and of a more sustainable society. So indirectly, we see that that convergence is happening and uh, if you look at uh, communications 
like the circular economy, you will find that all that is suggested requires digital solutions. So I am uh, coming from a part of the commission, which is the director general for informatics, working mostly on, let's say, the, the digital side. But we are having more and more discussions with the policy side. And that is exactly um, what we need, is, is to have this dialogue between policy and the technical side so that we can accelerate this transition and at the same time not reinvent the wheel because i think everyone is tired of uh, constantly you know uh, finding new <laughs> new things to 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 do uh, without without need so this is where fireware is also excellent because you you have been around for quite some time now it's a very sustainable platform that can let's say continue to be exploited and then evolve to meet the new challenges. So we, we clearly see here uh, a, a lot of positive synergies. There is some question from Juanjo? Yes, there is another one on the chat, if you can see it. Self-building blocks have the potential to impact uh, uh, just uh, creation of trusted this space. Are uh, three actions in place towards positioning self-building blocks in that? Yes, exactly what I was saying, uh, Juanjo. So if you look at the data communication, there is this idea of um, creating nine data spaces uh, where we clearly see that there is a need for more sharing of information. We, meaning the member states, there is in the Better Regulation website, the results of uh, the re recent consultation. I can, I, can, uh, I can paste here the link. So you will see the reaction of, uh, uh, well, everyone that, answered to the uh, to that communication of the commission on on the on data um, and we are in contact with the g connect uh, so that we can position the building blocks uh, for example digital identity you need digital identity independently of um, the data space that um, we are let's say talking about you need digital signature you need all these technologies context broker for the mobility of course one so we are in contact with uh, the policy side of the commission and uh, showing that by reusing the building blocks we can accelerate all this transformation and do it in a more efficient and green way what will be the main changes with the with the digital euro program versus what we have now that's a that's a very good question so the digital europe program is the first fully digital program um, that um, the commission and the member states have uh, put forward as you know um, so it will be a very large program and uh, there will be different pillars inside of the program and we will transition the building blocks hopefully to one of these pillars uh, now there will be of course a number of areas where the commission will be active um, i think our relationship uh, with uh, with fireware uh, we can have a separate discussion about this but what um, I can tell you is that the Digital Euro program, even though there were cuts because of the MFF negotiations, it's a very ambitious program. It puts forward, uh, let's say, the idea of the Commission leading in areas like blockchain. And I already uh, tried to explain to Stefano that we have to collaborate there on, on the blockchain side. And I know you will be giving a presentation about that. So one of the building blocks that we are currently involved in is the European um, blockchain infrastructure so let's the ebsi services infrastructure so let's not forget to collaborate in in that one there will be a lot on ai there will be a lot on uh, smart cities so yeah it's a very ambitious program and i'm sure that we should continue to to collaborate not only around the context broker but also other things that are ongoing and um, i hope that uh, uh, the the fireware foundation uh, looks at the work on the ebsi and is able to use it uh, so great um how can we push european countries to be more concerned about uh, open standard we use uh, open source and integration with local id system uh, with adas that's of course a challenge uh, i'm going to give you an answer that is not the full answer but one of the regulations that i meant mentioned there is the single digital gateway sdg and Inside of that regulation, that is an obligation for the member states, of course, 
Um, there is a, a, an article, Article 14, on the once only principle. What it means is that the member states have committed through that regulation to make 21 administrative procedures available online and to share data to complete those procedures. So we call them share of evidences. By doing this, we will be discussing with many other DGs of the Commission to ensure that we can meet the requirements of that regulation. Now, the OOP, once only principal technical system, will be reusing most of the building blocks that we have just mentioned here. And the once only principal will be one of the data spaces that is also part of the data strategy, the latest data strategy of the Commission. So it means that the, the new regulations already embed some of these principles and allow the member states, and hopefully also the recovery plan will be helping them on the financial side, to move away from their legacy systems and to privilege open standards, open solutions, and continue their digital transformation in a platform that is much more open than previously. So there is a regulatory push that is then followed, of course, by an implementation push, uh, and we are part of that transformation always with the same ideas. So if you go to Ceph Digital, you will see a lot of stories that show that this is actually happening and it's not like just a dream, you know? Great, thank you very much. Uh, I think you should come to Italy and, and tell them uh, all these stories, but we will invite you, I'm sure. So thank sure. you very much indeed. I think that we should go on to the second speech. Do you agree? Uh, so, uh, Joachim van der Boek, uh, I cannot pronounce it, I'm sorry, CTO of Crossland, uh, and uh, he will talk about uh, Shepherd Fort Cities making public smart city services multilingual. Please, to you. Okay, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Joachim. Uh, I'm, first of all, let me say that I'm very happy with uh, Joao's uh, presentation because it uh, takes away the burden for me to talk about the policy framework. Uh, so um, I will be, I, I'm, I'm the CTO of Crosslang, but today I, uh, I will be representing the Hot for Cities project. Uh, this is run by, by Crosslang and Koreon, so two natural language processing companies, then the Firewire Foundation, and also uh, two cities, Brussels and Vienna, um, mainly the, the, the business agencies. So uh, what Joao told us uh, in, in, the, in the previous presentation, uh, that was all about the, the, the policy framework and um, what uh, I will be presenting is an implementation of that. So um, we are actually funded by the CEF Telecom and um, what we are doing in this project is using various of the building blocks that Joao mentioned to uh, create a new application. And as you can see in this uh, title slide, the idea is to make public services um, multilingual. So, um, okay, um, if we talk about e-governments and about what we can do, let's first have a look at, at the state of affairs uh, currently. So what you see here is a graph that was taken from the e-government benchmark, and that's a report that uh, tells us how well um, European uh, EU countries are, are in um, transforming their public administrations to fully digitized solutions so uh, as you can see we we're on we're on a good way but um, on the right hand side so on the the, the 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 horizontal axis you have the digitization and you see in the lower left hand corner there are still a lot of countries so meaning that uh, there is still not sufficient digitization now um, if we think about what that actually means um, then we have to, to, to go and, and, and have a look at, at, at uh, the infrastructures that are in place. And, and, and if you take a look at, for example, uh, there are some, some, some um, villages or cities in Belgium that do have websites, but from which you have to download forms. And so if you want to interact with the government to get some subsidy or anything else, then you still need to fill out paperwork. So if we talk about lack of digitization, this is really what we mean. On the other hand, if you look at the, 
the upper uh, right hand corner these are the countries that have uh, implemented fruitful egov but still there it doesn't mean that everyone or all cities have um, really nice e-government applications it means that most of them have so this is belgium is, is uh, as you can see somewhere in the middle we already have a couple of cities that are really um, evolved in implementing everything in digital but still there are uh, many many cities who have not so the problem there is that it is really difficult many of these cities who have built their websites have uh, put a lot of effort in it and so if for example, hey, you have you would have to switch uh, whatever you have present, like website with uh, PDF forms. If you want to switch that uh, into a fully digitized application, that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, uh, not only in inventorizing everything uh, that you offer, but also in really transforming all the data and the data requirements. So the input fields and the outputs that you would need to, to have an application creating all that is really, really difficult. And um, what we want to do with this project is apply natural language processing and artificial intelligence to uh, help cities in doing that because cities are the, the, the government level that are closest to the citizens. So we, we, we thought it would be really useful and important to help uh, cities in doing that. And the idea is that we take a look at the cities in the upper right-hand corner, so the ones that are, have already modeled uh, their services, and then take the ones in the left-hand lower corner uh, by the hand and help them by <clears throat> providing tools. So this was uh, only one part of the, the, the problem, because if we have a look now at um, the implementation of e-government in a cross-border manner, then the well the outlook is uh, well a bit less optimistic so you can see that uh, for example malta has uh, implemented everything in a cross border manner it's almost one at 100% but if you look at uh, the other countries then you see yeah uh, so uh, sometimes it's it's even below 20% but on average uh, you can see that there's still uh, a lot of work to do so if we want to help cities in building digitized solutions what we want to do uh, and and we want to um we want to to uh, uh catch two birds with one stone what we want to do is make these solutions portable to other languages so what we will be doing is not only helping cities in uh inventorizing all their public services and publishing them in open data format but doing that uh in a multilingual manner so the idea is uh, as you see here in uh, the solution that we propose there there are there is already um, a great deal of te technology available so you have the, the core public services vocabulary application profile so these are vocabularies that can be used to describe publish to public services and these are the ones that we will be using and then what we also want to do is we want between all these websites these pdf documents we want to to put a uh, um, a processing layer, a multilingual linguistic processing layer to ensure that everything that is already available that, that can be reused to create uh, these new catalogs of services. And eventually we will be packaging everything into a toolbox and, uh, and, and distribute that uh, among cities. Then, um, as was already mentioned today, the emphasis is on the use of open uh, packages and open standards and so we will be using quite a lot of them uh, as i already mentioned we will be using the core vocabularies that are uh, promoted by uh, the isa action and then on the other hand uh, we have on the and in, in first column we have a couple of open soft source software packages that we will uh, be using so uh, everything that uh, is related to machine learning uh, will be um, open source, uh, so we will build uh, further upon existing projects and the results will also be open sourced. And we will uh, use open linked data standards uh, to ensure that all the services that we collect during this project, that they can be shared in an open manner. On the right hand side uh, column, you see that we will be using uh, Ceph building blocks. So these are the interoperability infrastructures that Joao was, was talking about. Uh, one that was not mentioned is CEPH uh, e-translation, CEPH AT e-translation. AT stands for automated translation. Uh, what we want to do there is we do not only want to translate 
data um, or labels when we use open link data, but we also want to translate the, the source text that we uh, collect because uh, it will help us in modeling uh, multilingual uh, vocabularies. So the, the, the nice thing here is that we will massively translate websites and documents just to uh, take advantage of uh, the extra data that we will get for modeling. And then uh, secondly, we will also use the, the Ceph Fiverr Context Broker. And the idea is there that once we have built our catalogs that we want to inject them into the data, uh, the, the data ecosystem so that they can be reused by uh, multiple services. Um, yeah, and so uh, this may all sound a bit abstract. Uh, so what is it, what we really uh, are, are doing right now? So currently we were working on making um, this uh, picture here uh, a bit more automated. So if we look at uh, public administrations, the way they have been set up in, in earlier days, then uh, we always consider that as a, as a snakes and, and ladder game we meaning uh, the consortium. So you still have workflows that start from free text and you see that the, all sorts of transformations uh, can occur. Uh, but in the end, what we have right now, if you look at uh, city websites that do not have e-government uh, applications, we see that most of the cities um, do their own thing and they create databases and applications and database fields and all this um, most of the time well, not, not, not always, but very often it ends up in a fragmented UI. So what we want to do is we want to uh, use open standards to uh, make sure that uh, what you have in one city can be reused in another city. Uh, as I mentioned, there are all the, 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 the core vocabularies. And so it is our task in this project to provide the ladders in the snakes and ladder game and to ensure that whatever we find in free text that is first converted into concepts and then in cat into catalogs of services. Um, yeah, I'm, I see I'm, I'm running out of time. Um, as uh, we mentioned, uh, or as already was, as already was mentioned, um, it is sometimes very difficult to put something, uh, uh, to, to, to provide, some, to present something and then make sure that, that people implement it. And, and we know that um, co-creation is probably here the way to go. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to involve Fireware in this project at the very beginning so that we can integrate our data solution with uh, the Fireware uh, context broker so that cities, once they are connected to the Fireware ecosystem, that they can immediately use uh, whatever we will be creating. And then, of course, uh, it's not because we have data integration that people will be using it. So uh, a very important part of the projects will be uh, two or three hackathons that will be organized and in which we want to encourage uh, co-creation. So we know that every city is, is like this microcosmos, especially if, if you go to uh, the, the IT department. So uh, to ensure that we get all these people on board, we will uh, come to them uh, with hackathons. And then uh, finally, this is my last slide. Uh, what does this mean for value creation? Um, like was mentioned before, uh, if we talk about public services, uh, this is not an entirely um, government thing. So uh, there was already uh, the call to action to ensure that um, government or public services and private services could be mixed together. Because in the end, if you arrive in a new city, you you do not only want to register as a citizen, but you also want to build your life. And so you will have to deal with or uh, look for yourself for, for services that are not uh, offered by the, the local administration, like uh, daycare. Uh, if, if you're new, you probably want some language lessons and sports infrastructure. What we want to do is so uh, for the public administrations, we will creating these public services catalogs and with these tools, we will also encourage uh, local service providers from the private sector to use the same data models and standards and tools to also provide their service offerings into um, an open linked data format. And the final idea is then that uh, application developers can create applications and use the data that is uh, exposed through the Fiverr uh, context broker. And Compatibility would be there the the well the the major.
call because if, if you look at how uh, the COVID-19 crisis uh, is being tackled by contract tracing applications that are interoperable across Europe, the idea would be once you go, for example, to Brussels, you could use the same data model to go, for example, to Vienna and uh, their query uh, local and local public and private uh, service providers. Sorry for rushing through this presentation, but 10 minutes is really short. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always have a look at the Cephat for Cities website, or you can just contact me directly or through uh, either. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, for him. Uh, uh, we will be uh, able to give some question and answer later on, if you can stay, right? So uh, now the 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 floor is to Stefano De Panfilis, is the first name I can pronounce in the right way <laughs> because it's Italian. And uh, he is the uh, Chief uh, Operating Officer of Power Foundation and will talk about public sector innovation and the role of distributed ledger technologies. Thank you, Stefano, please. Good afternoon, yes. Um, thank you, Flavia. Thank you, Fire Foundation, for the invitation. Because, in fact, uh, today, yes, of course, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Fire Foundation. But um, I'm here, I want to talk about uh, a project uh, we are coordinating, which is uh, bringing uh, some interesting um, proposals, uh, in this case, to use distributed ledger technologies for transforming public administration. So I enjoyed very much the, the presentation of both um, um, Flavia and also Joao because they set up the themes in a way that, uh, well, play the ground for me in this talk because you will see most of the challenge that uh, Flavia said before uh, uh, in place, or at least we would like to be in place. So this project, um, is about uh, creating an experimental ecosystem and putting in place uh, some, uh, uh, some use cases that uh, are meant to be replicable uh, and to uh, enable the use and adoption of distributed ledger technologies. What is distributed ledger technologies? Uh, yes, we are talking about, of course, of, of uh, the most uh, famous implementation of this, which is blockchain in particular. So blockchain is one uh, of the of, uh, technology that belongs to this approach. Here it comes uh, one of the first um, somewhat obvious slide, because uh, also uh, uh, we saw some of these elements uh, earlier in the presentation of Flavia and Joao as well. But, but this uh, slide uh, and the number here are uh, coming from a thorough analysis that have been conducted within the project uh, where literature have been uh, analyzed and screened. And uh, so some evidences has been brought out of about the introduction and the expectation about using uh, the blockchains in, in for public administration. So the, 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 the opportunities and the challenges are seen through the eyes of public administration and through the eyes of citizens. And in the, the literature, what is uh, in this analysis, what came out is that the three uh, top uh, challenges and opportunities for public administration opportunities are efficiency, traceability, and security, while for uh, the, the and the related challenges are uh, the uncertainty of uh, the regulatory system. We saw several examples before in the speech of Flavia, the scalability aspect, and uh, the high energy consumption that should control. Uh, while for citizens, uh, also this was explained before by Joao when putting together the aspects of. Um, <clears throat> transformation of the, the, the public sector together with the societal over evolution of citizens. We are talking about security, so decentralization and ability of the, the institutions, let's say, transparency and trust, and greater control over personal data. If you like, these three, these three opportunities uh, are very much uh, linked one each other, and, and the, the, the challenges are 
yes, the security lack of flexibility and not in it as well. So everything that was uh, said uh, before by Flavia and, uh, and Joao is, uh, is, we made it consistent and really, let's say, not just a perception, but something that is concrete. And like this has been published. So the token approach is, uh, in this case, uh, what we want to do is to create this decentralized uh, architecture that we will, as uh, one, as, uh, sorry, Joao was uh, saying before, is based uh, on uh, one of the, uh, we are working together with one of the, the, the building blocks, in particular the European blockchain service infrastructure that we want to use as a main reference. So here also this project, that when it was uh, create, uh, set up, the, this building block was not existing, but as soon as it came out, uh, we create immediately the joint because particularly for a project that is targeting public, public administration transformation is critical that we use the, the solutions that European Commission endorses. So this architecture uh, will be deployed in a sandbox infrastructure that allows uh, to make the experiments. And then, uh, yes, this uh, experimental ecosystem where use cases are put in together by following uh, what uh, we say a bottom up approach in the sense that we go from the needs and up to the down to the up to the solutions. Uh, which are these use cases? One of which you will hear later this afternoon is the last one about data valorization services and, uh, and marketplace for, from the city of Santander. So I don't say anything here. You will hear a great presentation later. And um, <clears throat> but we have uh, also other three that are about public funding distribution. This will be implemented in Poland. The idea is to uh, uh, support the grant distribution uh, through uh, competitive open calls. Then uh, in Greece, uh, in Greece, in the municipality of Katerini, the idea is to support uh, the, pro the process of pro public procurement. And, and in Belgium, <coughs> the uh, whatever is concerning efficient logistic in particular to mobility. So these use cases uh, are very much the link with the, the need of trustworthy and efficiency and this is why they have been chosen in order to uh, evaluate the adoption of a blockchain. So the expected benefits is uh, well more efficiency, in the solutions, the flexibility, transparency, of course, is one of the core, and the trustworthiness, as was said before, and, and then that, of course, is very much linked with privacy. The two things must work together. Which are the recommendations that after almost one year on life of the project, the project was started the 1st of uh, uh, January this year, we can already uh, uh, end this or so we can put on the table. First of all, and here uh, really, uh, this uh, this part of the presentation is very uh, nicely linked with what also Flavio was saying before. So, uh, first, uh, get out of the building. So, the, the 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 understanding of the requirements need the involvement of stakeholders. Second, uh, ideation of technology. That is uh, uh, to make easier the, the, the adoption, you need to have the, the involvement in the choices where the technology is, uh, is supposed to, to, to or expected to, to, to solve. And, and uh, it, this is uh, together with the fact that technology per se is not a silver bullet. So you need to understand the, the conditions under which you want to use this technology. Second, um, uh, recommendation uh, are so the measures that we, uh, I don't know whether Zhao is still, is still connected, but the, these are the measures that we are pushing, uh, would like to propose to European, for European policy is about that uh, social sciences and human expertise shall be well represented together with technology experts. So digital transformation cannot be made without the understanding of the cultural context and the humanitarian context and the social context where these are going to be. 
it is important to have a thorough uh, ex ante analysis as we perform, and this has been mostly performed also in the to establish the for the use case that uh, that we where we want to use this technology, and also of course uh, uh, to foster the, the the use of impact assessment at all levels because this is important also. Uh, when uh, politicians made investments, those investments in the end need to be validated also. Um, what about uh, the, the recommendation of the public, se public sector? So, <clears throat> first, what we would like, and this is already somehow explained before by, by Joao, the to the disposal of member states, uh, together with member states, technology that can be used as a playground. So. Uh, this is a European blockchain partnership to support the adoption of uh, this, uh, in particular, this case of uh, blockchain, and uh, and of course continue to promote in this interdisciplinarity. How can European policy help governments at all levels? Well, educate. As you understand, this is one of the elements that. Uh, in particular, when we want to create transformation, the, uh, the education should go together. Involvement, I said this written many times, I first said many times by, by Flavia in her initial speech, involved to project trials, all the people that are involved in the, in the transformation process and uh, adoption, so supporting the adoption of the technologies. Um, so sorry, I went back. Um, and uh, also, in order to help the instrument to to have governments become agile and innovative, also uh, first, yes, again, train education at all levels, but also not huge projects. But although, or if you have new project things that are uh, have short learning cycles. So maybe one after the other in order to uh, create the, the, the perfect expectation and evolution and involvement and engagement of the actors in this uh, option. Um, Stefano, um, we have well, one, one minute more to go. Well, this is even too much because Thank my you. last slide, my last slide is uh, that I was, uh, is this one, so in order to, for you to participate in this endeavor, we are uh, we created a, a, a token community that is uh, DLT for God. You have uh, the links. You can uh, also ask to me this, and then, then in this community, you have not only the results of this project but also of other projects affected with the same uh, approach, and where uh, you find discussion, technologies, uh, experiences, uh, and other people interested to talk about. Thank you. So less than a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Stefano. Thank you indeed also for the sharpness. It's not easy, but uh, we should uh, keep on the time schedule. So uh, now the floor is to Juan Hierro. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, the Flower Roadmap uh, Insights. Please. Thank you very much. So, well, Fiverr brings uh, today mature market-ready technology, enabling the creation of smart solutions in multiple domains, supporting the digital transformation of organizations. But of course, technology needs to keep evolving, and Fiverr is not an exception to this rule. Uh, so, during this presentation, I will be trying to summarize some of the roadmap activities that the Fireware community is focused on and which may be of particular interest to public uh, administration. This first slide you see here um, is not only going to be used as an introduction but also later on as the summary of what uh, we are going to cover in this presentation and it brings a number of uh, activities, roadmap activities that um, are typically connected to a number of very concrete projects that the fiber community is um, performing uh, uh, concrete projects where we 
intend to produce technology that can be used, mature to be ready to use in the market, uh, technology that is tested with pilot with uh, real users. And also another message I want to convey is that all these um, uh, main lines of activities are typically connected to fiber technical roadmap working groups, which uh, uh, engage together a number of members of the community interested in those topics, plus um, additional invited experts um, outside the community trying to you know, drive direction of fiber in these uh, areas. I will go through each of them, trying to, of course, with the very limited time to simply uh, enunciate and, and give the highlights on, on, on these roadmap activities and later on um, um, an invitation for joining us. In, uh, in If you are interested in, uh, you can join us in this working group. So first topic is digital twin standardization. Digital twin is a concept. You is a buzzword that uh, everyone uh, now use uh, uh, um, all the way. Um, is uh, not only in manufacturing now gradually emerging as a buzzword in also public administrations, smart cities, and so on. But what, uh, on the other hand, uh, it happens is that nobody is able to answer you how you can materialize systems uh, based on this digital twin concept or what kind of open source technology you can rely on uh, uh, because there is not such a standard. And FIWARE is, in that sense, committed to give answer to these gaps and bring the kind of a standards that would be needed to um, uh, bring support to creation of systems based on this digital twin concept. Because digital twins are not uh, anything different than the context entities that describe the real world, uh, which is the basis of FIWARE. Actually, FIWARE is in a privileged position to do the standardization around digital twins, because NGSILD is emerging as the perfect candidate to cover how information describing the state of a digital twin can be accessed. However, there are a number of uh, topics that still need to be covered, gaps in standardization, and FIWARE will be putting efforts in this, uh, in this line. To mention three, which are kind of a focus of uh, the attention uh, within the uh, digital twin uh, FIWARE Tech uh, Roma working group, how to manage actuation through digital twins, how to model and define behavior associated to digital twins, because digital twins are not just collection of data, is uh, also are living entities that react in a given manner to um, uh, change on the context around. And we need to come with good paradigms, how this could be defined and implemented. Also, how to deal with 3D virtual representation of, of a world based on digital twins and concepts like that. Um, a number of challenges that are quite interesting and we are covering in, uh, as part of our roadmap. Second topic, very, very important, is definition of smart data models. We already have a good portfolio of uh, data models defined that uh, the FIWARE community is bringing across different domains, but this is something that needs to continue. It's a continuous work, uh, will probably not end uh, in, in many years, but, uh, but uh, we are uh, certainly committed with, uh, to provide support to the community and, and liaisoning with other organizations in creating the kind of the standard data models that will warrant that portable application will be portable and replicable across domains. So an initiative in this respect we have created together with Tian Forum, other organizations are about to join. You can visit us on GitHub, uh, there you have the link and you will be able to discover what uh, different members of the community are bringing as uh, standard data model. Third element in this roadmap I wanted to uh, talk about is the support to data marketplace, data economy, data sharing spaces, spaces for data sharing and trading are also hot topics in the agenda, digital agenda in Europe, but also globally. And FIWARE already brings technology to materialize uh, data marketplaces, service marketplaces nowadays. So this is 
uh, market ready technology, tested technology, but there are a number of things we want to keep working to, to, to make sure that uh, uh, our technology is able to face all the challenges. So we are working towards alignment with the latest version of PM4 and specifications. We are also working towards the support of federation capabilities among marketplace. This has to do a lot with how to solve identity management uh, all the way in a distributed manner and the support and the integration with blockchain technologies to support and guarantee trust in the uh, all the processes that has to do with uh, really accounting usage of data, uh, being able to support uh, monetization, <laughs> settlement and stuff like that. Um, integration with blockchain distributed ledger technology is not only uh, um, uh, connected to um, to um, to these data monetization aspects. We are bringing, and this will be very soon uh, uh, part of the next uh, firmware release. Uh, we will bring connectors that will uh, really make quite a straightforward, very easy to uh, integrate blockchain distributed ledger technologies with any kind of power by power system. Uh, distributed ledger technologies gravitate around the concept of transaction and in power by power systems, those kind of transactions are precisely updates on context information. These changes you may uh, perform on the properties uh, uh, of uh, the different digital twins that build the context. So what we are going to bring are components that will automatically allow you to say, okay, these are the uh, context updates in my system, that these are the properties I want to, uh, you know, keep record about changes and do it in a way that cannot be manipulated. And that's how any updates on those properties will be stored automatically in a distributed ledger, no programming, really a, a fast integration of, uh, of uh, any kind of power by power system uh, with distributed ledger technology. So you may be uh, you know, uh, 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 safe with the kind of design you are already implementing with your uh, fiber uh, uh, solutions with uh, the context broker building block uh, the ability to configure uh, uh, the system to incorporate some of these transactions, uh, transfer them to the ledger will be a matter of configuration. And um, furthermore, and very important, the kind of uh, connectors we are building will abstract you away of the details of what concrete blockchain distributed ledger technology you will use. Furthermore, we are also working on uh, Proposing context broker technology as a mean to store information you don't need to store in the in the distributed ledger, kind of uh, working as an off-chain storage, and these are the kind of activities we are working on. The last point, the last kind of uh, realm of activities we are focusing on is trying to make a reality the notion of reusable plug and play AI and machine learning services that you could. Um, uh, different uh, artificial uh, intelligence machine learning service provider can uh, publish on a marketplace and therefore application users will be able to just choose them, acquire them through the marketplace uh, by opting uh, on uh, a particular uh, pricing model and or subscription model and then be able to plug and play their applications to these AI services without the need to really be experts on AI, really be experts on machine learning, just leveraging on the ability that uh, fiber technologies will bring on how to connect uh, uh, client systems uh, with the AI services uh, they consume. Um, a lot of things uh, can be said about this, but obviously, we cannot go through all the details. Again, the summary of the main roadmap uh, um, activities we are carrying out. Remember, uh, a working group, uh, Firewall Technical Roadmap Working Group is getting created uh, around each of these working uh, activities. And if you want to join, uh, just contact us. Uh, you have my contact, um, you can, um, 
sent uh, as an email and this way um, start working with us uh, understanding what other projects are doing and and trying to uh, drive things in, in in the best direction thank you very much thank you thank you very much Juan. thank you also because uh, you showed a bit uh, your time so we can now have a, a brief moment of q and a uh, for Joaquim, uh, Stefan and you. So if you write uh, any question on the chat, uh, as where I have a first question for Joaquim. Uh, the, the main objective of uh, CEFAT for cities actually is to develop a smart city natural language contest, providing multilingual interoperability of the context uh, broker DSI and making public smart city services multilingual with pilots in Vienna and Brussels, right? So can you please explain your plans for the knowledge transfer to other city? Yeah, so uh, the knowledge transfer will, first of all, consist of uh, a separate, uh, um, it's, not, it's a separate activity in a work package. So uh, first of all, we aim at uh, organizing these hackathons and they will be open. So uh, we were still hesitating about what kind of formats that we will uh, organize them in, because uh, with, uh, with the COVID-19 crisis, it's, it's, it's quite difficult. So, but that's only one part of uh, engaging uh, people in, in, in using the platform. The other part uh, will consist of visits to cities, so virtual visits to cities, um, mm -hmm. and, and talks with uh, the, the local IT uh, uh, guys so that uh, we can uh, show them what kind of uh, tools that we have and how they can use it. Great, thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much indeed. If there is no other question on the chat, I don't see that, uh, I pass through Stefano. How will token be connected to the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure Initiative? Thank you, Flavia. Um, yes, I um, I explained a bit uh, during my, my talk that um, uh, the, the project is about uh, uh, distributed ledger technology as such, but of course, in order to implement them uh, in a concrete manner, uh, we are uh, integrating the and, and also participating together in several meet, meetings and workshops, the European blockchain um, initiatives. The, um, that that is one of the building block uh, the, of the CEF mm -hmm. initiative. So this is right. this make as I said uh, stronger the also the to show to public administration that things can be concrete and supported well supported at European level. Uh huh. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, Juanco, uh, Fireware has uh, created itself already as well recognize the name in the area of e-government with real solution on, on show example at least the uh, ES smart country convention in Berlin. What can we expect on uh, on that next shows in 2021? Um, regarding public administrations uh, you mean yeah. In, uh, go yeah yeah well I think um, um, or I expect that uh, we will be able to show um, some uh, real use cases uh, around um, the concepts I was introducing in this roadmap uh, initiative. So I think the uh, the question about uh, data marketplaces uh, and how um, public administration could engage in part of these uh, data marketplaces, not only involving mm -hmm. data of public administration, but also the private sector, is one mm -hmm. of the things we will see soon or and definitely we are committed to to bring in place and and a dedicated um, uh, and running instance which uh, helps to to demonstrate this and 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 hopefully will help also administration to perform uh, first steps towards this integration i think also this this question about connection to uh, distributed ledger technology, sometimes connected to this data marketplace, but also in connection to um, uh, use cases that has to do with uh, transparency in the process of public administrations, which is uh, quite important. Uh, we certainly will, will be working together with the uh, CEF people in 
integrating integrating with the European blockchain service infrastructure, as as um, Stefano has already mentioned. Um, and last but not least, I think this there is a, a, a high promising area on artificial intelligence machine learning. But uh, here is where the challenge is how to make the technology easy to use because uh, public administrations are not necessarily the organizations that should have the the experts the, on these technologies. Uh, however, uh, there should be ways of being able to exploit the information that public administrations um, uh, gather and, and be able to exploit also the talent of uh, many AI experts and machine learning experts uh, all uh, are around the world to to be able to demonstrate what they can do with the data and uh, this way you know uh, trigger on open innovation support uh, innovative business models and support growth so we are certainly um, committed to to bring uh, concrete tangible uh, use cases testimonies on how we can make all this happen okay Great, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We uh, have just 10 minutes uh, late, so it's okay. Fantastic. Uh, now it is a great pleasure to, to give the floor to Flavio Bono. He's a scientific team leader at the European Commission in the JLC, and uh, he will talk about the integration on smart infrastructure into smart cities, research activities at the EC European Commission uh, Joint Research Center. Please, Flavio. Uh, I go ahead. Uh, thanks a lot. Good afternoon. And uh, um, I, I would like, uh, first of all, to uh, thanks for the invitation, the organizer of uh, this nice event. And I will talk about the uh, work that we are performing uh, at the Joint Resource Center of the European Commission about the integration of smart infrastructures into smart cities. And uh, basically, the research activities uh, that we are performing uh, at the uh, the Joint Resource Center. So for those who don't know about us, uh, the JRC is part of the Commission. So uh, it provides scientific and knowledge services to the Commission and supports uh, uh, European policies with independent evidence uh, throughout the whole policy cycle. Um, this is um, uh, basically um, uh, the JRC is composed of uh, uh, five main centers with the headquarters in Brussels and I belong to the JRC E4 unit uh, that uh, is based in uh, East Prime Italy, it's the largest facility here. And it's the, the E4 unit is safety and security of buildings, deals with uh, resilience of territories, adapt adaptation to climate change, uh, the Euro codes, and we also uh, are dealing with the security of public spaces, uh, detecting the emergence of uh, new threats for the safety of citizens, and uh, we uh, are dealing with sensors and smart cities. So here you can see a few examples of, of past projects. So you can see uh, in the first one on the left, it's a, a 20 meters arch bridge because we have a large testing facility where we uh, can perform tests of uh, large scale or real scale buildings. And uh, so uh, I would like to uh, um, have your attention on the number of wires that we have in this uh, uh, test on the left. So we, for our test, we always use sensors. We always perform acquisition of uh, what's happening to the structures that we are testing uh, during the experiments. And we progressively uh, switch to wireless technologies and uh, we um, started using wireless devices, for example, like in this prototype of, uh, 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 let's say, an intelligent shipping container that we developed uh, for testing the feasibility of it. And this container was equipped with uh, wireless sensors, uh, low energy um, consumption devices for detecting uh, threats. Uh, so why e-governance and infrastructure? So uh, is smart cities, uh, um, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, Hello. Okay, so uh, smart cities, as the Commission says, digital technology is translating into better public services for citizens, better use of resources, and less impact on the environment. So this is quite important because infrastructure are a crucial part for the functioning of cities. So information collected uh, also on the built environment are quite important for 
uh, the governing of cities and better decision making. And such information must be reliable and uh, must be timely and uh, they play a key role uh, for e-governance. So we collect information in cities at different levels. So we can see that we uh, are increasing complexity from uh, the acquisition from sensors and localized wild sensor nodes, uh, the integration with smart buildings and infrastructures, and the data acquisition that through system integration can be analyzed through, through complex system analysis. So this is adding complexity, but this is needed to provide not only raw data that it's important to have, but also the possibility to analyze them and provide uh, better knowledge in urban intelligence. So about our research on smart buildings and infrastructures, we started uh, some years ago on smart buildings and infrastructures. So you can see in this image here on the left, uh, this is a, the visualization of a multi-hop uh, communication network uh, uh, that was developed here in my unit. Uh, by colleagues uh, to study the possibility to have to deploy very low energy consumption devices in urban environment and you can see below uh, a mathematical analysis of the networks uh, that we can uh, uh, deploy in uh, in cities and this was on a, stu a study for the city of Brussels and uh, here you can see some of the uh, old nodes uh, wireless nodes that were developed for, for the work so we started moving and we wanted to understand better how a smart infrastructure can participate and can contribute to smart cities. So we started uh, with some test cases. Uh, this is a 100 meter high uh, atmospheric tower that we had uh, at the JRC East Pro site. Uh, it is equipped with many sensors, but we were interested on the structural monitoring. So uh, we install some sensors on the structure and we try to see what are the challenges to integrate such uh, acquisition system for structural head monitoring into a smart city platform such as Fireware. Uh, of course, the context broker is part of the uh, chat building blocks. So we wanted to see how uh, structural head monitoring that usually deals with high acquisition data rates, not directly compatible with the functioning of smart city platform. So how uh, what, what are the challenges to integrate such systems that most of the time are, are proprietary or custom developed and dedicated to one single specific structure? So this is the uh, schematization of uh, uh, the system that we implemented for the tower. We installed uh, wireless accelerometers at 180 and 60 meters on the tower. We have a gateway there that collects the information and synchronizes with the measurements that we are performing at the base. We have some wireless nodes with linear potentiometers to measure uh, displacement. So we transmit information to uh, a neutral light IoT agent, uh, actually more than one, uh, because we are trying to uh, stress the system and to see uh, how much information we can uh, provide to the system. And all the information are processed through, through the uh, firewall context broker. We rely on different databases. We are applying uh, a noticeable amount of information. So basically what we did, uh, we have a short-term history database in Postgres where uh, the context broker is deploying information. And uh, we, we have the visualization uh, system and application that uh, can visualize uh, the latest 24 hours information. But we also deploy information on a long-term uh, time series history database for later analysis. And we provide this information uh, also to colleagues through a second platform and everything is uh, can be accessed uh, through the commission network. So um, this uh, is a system that is working and uh, we are trying to see uh, also what are the challenges of using commercial systems uh, often with a proprietary communication protocol and the problems of uh, interference and the challenges of uh, having an, an architecture or a framework for the integration of smart infrastructures into smart cities to deal with all the information. Another issue that we're dealing with is the uh, aging of uh, the European transportation infrastructures. Uh, so I guess you all remember uh, the collapse of the Morandi Bridge in Genova, uh, and uh, this was a, a major, uh, major uh, issue. And that uh, also, apart from the tragedy 
or the people who died there, also this affected the city uh, of Genova in a noticeable way. So significant investment in maintenance of retrofitting are needed and uh, budget usually in uh, public administration, public authorities, usually they're not infinite. Uh, so they need to prioritize and to uh, uh, get knowledge uh, about the, the status of infrastructures, where to prioritize uh, the spending and not the solution of monitoring are needed. Uh, usually uh, new structures are all monitored, but uh, existing structures, bridges, they, 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 they need to be checked. So we have uh, an ongoing exploratory research project uh, in collaboration with the C4 unit um, and uh, so the idea is to uh, study the indirect, indirect structural health monitoring of structure. So vehicles nowadays are equipped with a number of sensors uh, and we can equip for example with accelerometers more information. So the idea is that the traveling vehicles can infer uh, about the status of, of the structures they're traveling on. So uh, we are working, uh, we already deployed the main structures when doing the, uh, the civil works to create the test circuit. So uh, the basic idea is to have connected vehicles to study uh, how the response of the structure from the measurements on board and compare them with the uh, all the sensor that we uh, equip the, the, the structure with. We already uh, deployed wireless accelerometers and displacement sensors on the structures. So in the future, uh, also, we have to consider that uh, additional information and additional providers of information will, will join the smart cities at different levels, like vehicles, for example. In uh, vehicle to infrastructure communication will be in place. Uh, the number and type of information must, must be sorted out uh, to understand, to have a better understanding of the functioning, not only for uh, the traffic functioning, but also for the status of infrastructures. So, we implemented this pilot system and we are performing a number of, of, uh, of different research activities uh, on this exploiting this system. So concluding, uh, in my view, future integration of smart infrastructures into smart cities will be strategic also for the e-governance, for better decision making, but also for the management of, uh, of uh, the building assets, uh, the, the built environment and uh, the infrastructure. So, Standard data and structures and interoperability mechanisms are crucial to facilitate the rapid uh, integration and deployment into smart city platform. And uh, we will progress with our work, possibly extending uh, the testing cases. We are not only working with uh, uh, structural health monitoring, but we are also deploying uh, different monitoring systems and in collaboration with the JRC infrastructure. So it's an evolving uh, work that uh, we will we'll develop in the future. So I would like to thank you for, for this and hope to show you more in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Flavio. Thank you also for your license. I saw at the end on the Creative Commons, so that means exactly sharing knowledge is what we say since, uh, since years. So uh, we have three more speeches before the Q&A. Uh, so now the floor is uh, to Juan uh, Echevarria Cuenca, uh, European Innovation Project Technician, uh, Santa Del City Council, and he will uh, give us uh, the second case study. So Santa Del Digital Marketplace, Data Economy, and DLT Technologies. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Ah, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, well, first I want I want to to thank you, the organizers, for the kind invitation to part for to participation in in this event. My presentation aims to tell a story from the point of view of the city. It's clear that our involvement in the development of of uh, of these uh, kind of things are mainly by use cases, requirement analysis, and result and sustainability, rather than in in the technical in a technical part. Uh, the content of my presentation will consist first of, of uh, an introduction to the context of the, of the city, uh, a brief explanation of the city strategy, and then I will talk about the objective sought with the setting up of a marketplace, and then I will talk also about the roadmap we have followed up to now. Finally, it will be time for some conclusion and to establish some future lines of work in 
in our city. In, in my presentation, I used to, to, to make a small introduction of the city and its context, not uh, with the aim of ad advertising our city, but uh, to give some uh, useful data that can serve as a reference to other cities that may be interested in, develop in developing activities similar to, to ours. Talking about Santander, you have here in, in this uh, image uh, a summary of the information. Uh, taking a look to the, to the population and other uh, inf data, um, it can be seen that uh, the, the city is uh, more or less a medium-sized city and perhaps in a global context even, even small. Uh, however, it can be seen that we have a pretty amount of different um, and a variety of infrastructures like uh, airport, the, uh, public transportation, high, high capacity roads and so on. And uh, the most interesting thing about that is that we are big enough to have uh, quite a few problems to solve in all the aspects that currently concern all more or less the, the medium, even bigger size uh, cities. Uh, regarding an economy, no, not too much to tell. Uh, we, we, uh, we can highlight that this, the main activity is centered in the service sector, sector although, although tourism is an important activity, the tourist, se tourist sector is not as fundamental to us and uh, as in other parts in, in Spain. Uh, it, it is important to highlight that uh, when you have uh, needs, you also need resources to solve that. And I, I usually highlight that uh, we have a, a, a university, a small but very productive university, the University of Cantabria, and an important IT sector. Also, we have a space, what is called a technological park, where a good number of companies with innovative profile are, are concentrated. Uh, regarding uh, city innovation strategy, the first thing to say is uh, that uh, our vision is always to improve the life of the citizen and visitors in the city, but we don't want to lose the human aspect. We consider the technology as a tool, uh, in fact, uh, a, a very powerful tool, to achieve our goals, but we, we want to put the citizen in the center of our, of our visions. This image shows the route uh, that we have taken and we are on the, on the path from, from the strategic and planning point of view. First, on the left, uh, in a classic approach, the first step is to make a assessing the municipality services in order to establish not only their needs, but also the degree of technological maturity that they have. When that uh, has been done in a second step, uh, what we did was to uh, introduce information collection system uh, in all the municipality services. In this uh, scenario, IoT was one of the technologies that we have, we have uh, introduced, but not always is the, the channel in which the municipality uh, services has the, their information. That has to be taken into account. Then, in the third step is what we, we have to, uh, it has been mentioned before in, in, this, in this event, is that we need to break, break the silo structure of the municipal, uh, municipal services. This is uh, done looking for two objectives. First, a municipal service can benefit from not only from the, its own data, but also from the data of other municipality services. And second, there are processes in the city that if you need uh, uh, an overall optimization that, that can, be, uh, can need to be carried out and in involving more than one municipality services uh, service and sometimes information out of the municipality and one this is uh, something that we are now in in this uh, in this step the final stage is to try to grow the data to in order to um, uh, revitalize the, in, the industrial fabric, the economic, the economy, and, and so. 
Uh, well, when sometimes strategy are plans and plans are only and in this image, uh, I, I try to show the involvement of the city in the innovation project. On the left uh, left hand side, uh, there are the innovation uh, projects uh, financed financed by the European Union. And uh, what is important to say is they, they, that they have allowed and testing different ideas in municipality services through pilots and experiments. On the something that is a compromise of uh, the municipality, we see the what we call the city projects. Our aim is to collect the best results and, uh, of the innovation project and apply them to what uh, to the city projects that are mainly financed by the city council. Two aspects. The first aspect is that we, when it's time to renew a municipality externalized service, we introduce IT requirements, and the second is setting up a specific IT contract like the smart city platform that you see uh, in the lower and the smart city uh, citizen project that is another very um, focused on the citizen on the citizenship project. Um, regarding the the city marketplace. Uh, I think all, all, all of us know that uh, cities are known to be very complex environments. If we add, we add the quick ra evolution of the technology and the changing environment, the, the situation become, becomes uh, worse. In this context, it's difficult to establish concrete measurable motivation and objectives beyond uh, what has been already said. But with this slide, I I want to establish at least some ideas. On the on the left side, uh, I I wanted to put um, the actors that uh, play some a role in this in this scenario. Uh, the public administration is only one of them, and the most important, at least from my point of view, for the public administration is to discover which, which actions it can take with a sensible use of the resources uh, and which of them have logically the greatest positive impact on, it, uh, on its uh, environment. Uh, at the end, all the actions should, should be aimed at facilitating and strengthening certain mechanisms that you can see on the right side. Uh, the, the, our main objective, perhaps, may be the, the economic revitalization, which is one of the, the key aspects of our strategic plan. And uh, our interest is to focus on promoting new IT based business and more specifically on creation, uh, on data value creation. Sometimes uh, somebody talks that is uh, related to, to money, but we think that we, we must take that in a more general uh, point of view. And this is the data value creation concept. Uh, regarding the the, the the marketplace uh, roadmap well here uh, you you can see a, an image uh, that uh, in, in which we have put the most outstanding innovation projects uh, on the on the top the the innovation project from the creation of a test bed the development of experimental as a service and the, the involvement all of all the stakeholders through co-creation co techniques the, the effort that we have made to create a single digital market for cities and ending with the project that uh, Stefano has uh, very well explained, that is the, the token in which we want to uh, use disruptive technology to be applied to the municipal services prov provision, in this case, uh, within the, the marketplace. Uh, at the bottom, uh, reference to the to the city projects uh, that are already mentioned from starting from the data portal and smart city platform and smart city project are 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 put um, well this is only just yes, uh, is 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 a figure that you can you have seen for sure before is uh, a reference to the smart santander projects only to say that uh, in that project, we use uh, 
the context bro broker and several data models for figure we use that and we contribute to to that uh, not exactly the the city of santander but the partners that participate did in the in the project in this uh, slide you can see our smart city platform in the middle in the middle part you can see the open data and the fiber is something that is the the linking point which are feeded but the information that comes to from the lower part and feeds um, other uh, more high level aspects that are in the in the higher part on the right hand side you can see uh, some collateral or, or ancillary aspect that we uh, take into consideration in the in the project uh, well here you you can see the a figure, uh, an image of the data marketplace that we um, one, carry sorry, out two, in our two more, project. Sorry? One, sorry, two more minutes. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. And uh, well, uh, in in this marketplace, what the city council wanted was to to provide free data and, and try to create create critical mass in order to consolidate the a, a digital a digital ecosystem. Well, uh, about talking about conclusion and looking at, uh, to the future, well, uh, this uh, the presentation can be summarized in, in two aspects. The first is that from a, a global point of view, our city want to be a, an active part in innovation. And from the marketplace point of view is that uh, it, I think it's clear that we want to take advantage of several positive uh, an um, um, aspect that uh, of what a marketplace um, uh, means and in this aspect we believe that dlt technology can reinforce the marketplace with the the feature that it uh, it has um, regarding talking about the future perhaps is is the most difficult part of of our work but uh, it's it worth men mentioning about that what we want to do is uh, make the integration of ai at the top of the platform and at, and also we have to take into account because it's now very important the to to see this uh, how uh, the cyber security must be integrated how for instance the computer computational capability has to take into account and only to say that we are also working now in in digital in digital twins and that's all thank you thank you very much and i hope you enjoy it yes we did uh, thank you very much Juan. Uh, so uh, let's go to the last uh, speech before the, the q a andrea slinenberg senior manager digitization and technology at unity aga platform architect at open data Paderborn uh, and the study is on the German city of Paderborn on the way from open data to urban data I'm very curious about that please yeah thank you um, I'm uh, presenting um, from our current running project and um, the, the next steps the city of Paderborn plans so I, I will give a bit of a status and an outlook um, where the city of Paderborn um, uh, yeah, is currently and wants to to go in the future. Um, let's start with the um, current status. Um, Paderborn um, did very early for for the city size, I would say, a uh, digital strategy um, for an um, from competition uh, some some years ago from from the uh, Bitkom uh, in Germany, and uh, this. Um, strategy was um, yeah, for the whole city and for uh, digitizing the whole city. Um, the um, strategy was uh, then um, not uh, selected in the in the Bitcom competition for the first place. So Paderborn decided to to go on uh, even if, if uh, yeah, we, we didn't win in this case and um, to start with a smaller scope and the smaller scope was uh, a concrete project which started last year in August um, that we started with building up an open data platform in Paderborn. And open data platform in this case means uh, 
not only open data portal, um, it's uh, behind the open data portal is a complete fiber infrastructure from the uh, IoT connecting site um, until or um, yeah, up to the CCAN portal and some use cases. The basic idea behind this project is um, to, to get the, the first experience in the city of Paderborn with new technology and from the new technology site. Um, and uh, yeah, to get clarification on the, on the legal and technical framework which is needed um, to run such an open data platform in the city and um, to use the, the running open data platform or the running open data um, initiative at the end um, as an innovation strategy to to get more um, ideas from from citizens, from partners, and so on. Um, the results of the project are and will be um, a pre-configured uh, platform, uh, which will be released um, in this pre-configured state as open source for other cities. And um, on top of this platform, the implementation of five concrete use cases. Um, for example, something like a, a citizen ticket system and um, uh, something like a, um, yeah, uh, sorry, for, uh, something like a um, uh, overview generation uh, for the for the city uh, department and so on. So um, several use cases based on on the platform. Um, and what we learned in this first year is. Um, that the technical side um, has even its, its own difficulties and, and uh, problems and so on, but uh, these were um, mostly managed so far. So um, we have a running platform which will be hopefully released to the public, to, to the usage uh, by the citizens of Paderborn in the next, let's say, four to six weeks. Um, but uh, the, the even, um, yeah, the, the more or less uh, same interesting part is on the on the process side, um, how to deal with uh, such a platform in a city infrastructure and uh, in the processes which the the uh, city um, normally lives and uh, which have now to be adapted. Um, and for example, um, even these um, these tickets, which could be now um, created by the citizens directly by uh, by their smartphone, um, even the clarification how to deal with these tickets, which department um, is responsible for which part of the tickets, how will be um, the the working on on the tickets, so integrated in the city processes or only based on the platform and so on, is a big clarification process and uh, it's um, not completely finalized for now and uh, all the learnings from designing the new process, the, the digitized process um, and which um, yeah, uh, changes for, for the um, former way of work for the city will come from these um, processes. Um, was a very big uh, starting point for us um, for planning the, the next steps after the open data platform. And that's um, the content of the, of the next slide. Um, the open data platform is here in the slide, only this layer. I hope you can see my mouse pointer, the open data platform layer over the city of Paderborn. As we, as we heard, um, the open data uh, part uh, will be part of the digital twin of the city but uh, from from our understanding what we how we defined the scope of the open data platform there's something more um, above it um, so we call it urban data platform which integrates more um, more data that is not um, automatically open because it's uh, um, product uh, protected uh, by by um, um, data protection guidelines or it, it should not be directly released uh, because of security reasons or something like this, but it's needed to um, orchestrate bigger processes. So the level above is in our understanding this urban data platform, which will host more or less something like a city information model. So in the city information model, 
all single digital twins of the city um, are connected. Um, we know which dependencies um, are at the end there and how they can work together. This very big future picture um, is um, very clearly not to achieve in a in a short time frame. And so the the big learning from the from the open data project is, and we we uh, planned or discussed this with with uh, the city of Paderborn here again and again, that it should be a step by step approach to come from the the small solution open data platform to a bigger one, the the complete one for the city of Paderborn, the the urban data platform and all the digital processes um, on this platform at the end. And um, what, what we even learned um, that it was very helpful, we draw it here on the upper left, um, that we have in Paderborn a very good um, working together with, with several groups um, from um, the, the um, Oh, sorry, here's something was not translated. It's a collaboration of uh, politics, uh, um, uh, science, and and the um, uh, industry in in Paderborn. The um, the um, leadership um, of of the city and the city society, which um, works very strong together um, with the digital um, department in Paderborn and even the digital governance board, uh, where decisions can be um, taken and have to be taken in which direction the next projects should go. Um, this is a very important part uh, which made the, the former projects um, successful um, as they are uh, for now and uh, which hopefully will, will help to get the next step successful too. One additional topic at the end, I would say, um, I. I said that open data platform, urban data platform, these are so to say layers which extend the scope. Um, but uh, yeah, even um, it, it's very clear for us that uh, even the urban data platform will not contain all, all data and uh, all infrastructure of the complete city. And as an example, you see here a smart grid data platform or a mobility data platform. So, um, in, in our mind is uh, an approach like a system, a system of systems approach so that at the end the citizen or any other user has one uh, yeah, single contact point but uh, the processes and the data could be federated managed in several platforms or systems um, and uh, these are working together to provide the, the best uh, achievable service uh, to the to the user. Um, I think that's all. Um, should be okay and in time, right? Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, I did uh, I make a, an, a, a, an error before. We have a last uh, uh, the case study for from uh, David Bueno, uh, CIO Municipal Information Technology Center at uh, City of Malaga, and he will talk about uh, making the most uh, out of data in Malaga City. Here you are. Okay, so thank you, thank you to the organization to to call me to 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 explain what we do in in Malaga. But I, I'm David Bueno, I'm the CIO of the city, and I'd like to show you what we have done with, with Mara with the open data. So we have a portal, open data portal, with more than 900 uh, data set. And what I'm going to show you is how do we maintain this number of data sets alive? That is very important if you have an open data portal. And also how do we exploit this information by ourselves, but also by third parties? So the, the first thing that we can see is how do we, okay. So here you can see uh, how do we uh, give information to our open data portal. So most of the services are web, web services and they are automated tasks. We have automated tasks task for, for them, but also some of, of them are FTP services 
and we can take information from from travel, uh, for example, buses uh, company, from bicycles, from mobility, from the parking uh, facilities. So all the information of the city, also coming some of them from the university, for culture, uh, and also related with the with the street maps. All the information goes to the open data uh, with times uh, with update in every case depending of the necessity for example some of the data set are updated every minute but others are updated uh, every day for example um, and this is uh, how we get to get uh, more than 900 uh, data, data set and to to provide to do things and what do we do so we we can see for example that uh, we fit the uh, geo portal i'm going uh, only to present little uh, information of what we do and then uh, with some of them i will present a little uh, more de in a more detailed way sorry so this is the geo portal that takes the information <coughs> of the of the open data uh, we also have a, a panel personalized panel dashboard for the for the citizen or for the for the tourist we also have an app, uh, this is the application, mobile application from of Malaga. Uh, we have a chatbot that uh, takes, uh, works with most of the open data, and it's uh, it permits to to talk with with citizens and tourists. We we also with this data we make a, a dashboard for internal um, use uh, in order to take decisions based on data. Uh, very important also is to have um, a, a portal in, in uh, it's a part of the open data portal where we publish all the information that are uh, developed by third parties that use our data so if a company or a university or students make some work using our data we publish on the on our web and also oh, sorry Okay, so so we have a GHub. So what does it mean that all the information that we do with our open data and all what we do, for example, because we have our portal federated with the national and with the European data portal, and we have developed some components and we share in, in GHub. So I'm going to, to pass to, to show you some of, of this. Okay, so here we can see the we can see the the web, our open open data portal. Uh, as I said, we have the data set with nearly nine nine hundred, and uh, we used to have things in in many different formats. For example, uh, we have the five relators that. Uh, gives information about where the, the five relators are in the city. You can see that we have, for example, uh, in five different formats and in two different uh, reference uh, models, like CSV, GeoJSON, uh, Geo, and in, in, the, in two different formats. So this is the, the origin of all the information. As I said before, we have a part of our data portal that uh, where we show where we, for example, here we have a form where everybody can send us the information of their application, and and if they use our data, we can publish here. So we have, uh, for example, here are some of the apps that are developed by third party. Also, they develop some some websites, and also there are some chatbots developed with our data. So this is very very interesting for us. Then we have the geo portal that all the uh, geo information is uh, taken from the open data, and here we can we have more than 80, 80 layers that we can choose. For example, here we can see some uh, monuments uh, or some museums where we can go click to to go to the detailed information of the of the museums. For example, here. And um, and this is the the geo portal. Another important important place is the is this the, the personal citizen dashboard that we developed using using Fiverr uh, to all the 
to keep all the log of all what has happened uh, during the time is using fiber and uh, what this uh, dashboard ma makes the give sorry this dashboard gives the possibility to, give the possibility to the citizen to have a personal dashboard so with by now, with these components that they can take and personalize as they want, you can have information about the bus stop that you used to, to use. You can have two or more components of each of them. You have also information about the parkings, uh, about the bicycle station. Uh, you can put uh, different layers of the geoportal and also select different cameras. Or uh, in summer, you can select the beach that where you want to go, and you can have information about temperature, water temperature, etc. Et uh, we are going to see this this dashboard that you can see here. For example, now I, I have uh, two cameras selected. You, you can see that every nearly every five seconds or something like this. The Shape a different one, and also, for example, I can take, I can have two bicycle station. Uh, for example, the station from when when I live, when I go to somewhere, and the station where uh, where I that is at the end of the of the road. We have the bus station, the, the beaches, etc. So this is the second example that is the dashboard. As I said, uh, we have uh, in GHub, we have the uh, information published, we have different components uh, like the Federator or even our CCAM, a open data model that uh, platform that do, that we use. Applications uh, and we, we share here in order that other cities, for example, now uh, four or five cities that use our see also uh, the, the application so let's see the mobile so here is my in my mobile I'm, I'm trying to show here and this is the the last ap application that we have developed where uh, where you can see uh, we, ca we have here for example uh, information about the incidents that happens in the in the city we can see which are the incidents that has happened uh, around us. Uh, for example, these are different things that, that some people have. But besides that, we have a lot of information. We have access from here to the, to the chatbot about mobility. Um, for example, we could see in health, it's very interesting because we have the the fibrillator that I told before. But the interesting thing is that we have the information in real time of the where are the fibrillators, and you can say, but they should be in a static place. Yes, there are some of them that are in a static place, but other, as you can see here, the the bus are inside of a bus, so you can see which is the the number of the bus, the, all the information about this and where it is exactly. And also you can say with, go, with how to get there, como llegar, it will take you with Google Maps to, to the, that place. So it's some of the things that we have in this application. Most of the information that here appears are also fit with the, with the open data. And finally, I, I have something that uh, it's interesting to to show you that is uh, the chatbot. The the thing is that she only speaks Spanish. is Victoria La Malagueña, and uh, in order the, to to start, it's only needed to to push on the button and say Victoria La Malagueña. Estos son los resultados de. Sorry, I said seis. <laughs> Victoria La Malagueña. And you can see that Google automatically calls to the chatbot. I'm going to ask for a for a information about parking. Ocupación aparcamiento alcazaba. Alcazaba situado en Plaza Las Casabas. 
you have seen that in real time she has asked for the information about the the parking another one for example tiempo de espera en la parada 307 Línea 41 no disponible, línea 71 en 9 minutos, línea 5 en 44 minutos. Adiós. Me ha encantado hablar con Okay, contigo. so, for example, you have seen that uh, I have called to two real-time services through the chatbot, and uh, it's it's looking to the information that has, is able is available uh, at the open data portal. So uh, this is uh, another example of, of interaction. Uh, and okay, I, I think I have uh, prepared everything to go fast. I don't know if I have done in, in time. I'm so yes, this is what it's okay. I wanted to show you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you finish? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So you, you, we just have a few minutes late. So fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, there will be for sure some question for you too. So we can uh, start with the Q and A. Uh, the the Q and A to the last session. So to, to Flavio, Juan, uh, Andreas, and uh, and you, David. So um, to Flavio. Uh, retrofitting uh, existing urban infrastructure as opposed to building new smart city for, from the ground up has been a long term challenge, right? With the population growing in density and also considering that city run like businesses in some way, it's critical to start with smart solutions that solve the largest problems and deliver the greatest ROI, the return on investment. From your perspective, what are the most challenging sector in that respect? Smarter housing, mobility, waste management, energy efficiency, other? Up to you. Okay, uh, thank you for the question and sorry for uh, the issues during my presentation. Uh, well, uh, considering the smart cities initially, they, they don't evolve uh, as an organic uh, with an organic approach, usually uh, they start investing in one sector that starts evolving, maybe with, with a platform and a system, then another one uh, is being started. So uh, there are uh, sectors that are uh, evolving at a different pace. And uh, I think that retrofitting is, is quite challenging because usually uh, if you think about the different uh, speed of uh, um, uh, the evolution of electronics and uh, software and uh, on the contrary the, the slow pace and uh, the, the life of, uh, of buildings that spans for more than 50 years so you see that there is a, a quite a difference usually we change our mobile phones every two or three years because uh, uh, new models new functionalities are uh, in place and we want to, to have more more powerful uh, devices but uh, buildings, uh, we're still using buildings from uh, 100 years old and so on. So also implementing new technologies in existing uh, in a, in existing building and in existing infrastructure is it, more difficult. If you think that uh, nowadays when they build a bridge, it comes already equipped with sensors and uh, for monitoring, but the problem that we have is with aging infrastructures. So uh, um, installing new sensors on existing bridges, for example, is challenging, it's, it is expensive, and it is where it's most needed. So I think that uh, retrofitting is, is quite challenging. Uh, other sectors, uh, I mean, uh, are evolving, and ultimately uh, what, what I understand is that uh, also uh, the building stock will, will, will have to contribute to, to the functioning of the smart cities. I mean, we, we, we cannot imagine that the smart city uh, install a number of sensors to uh, fully control uh, the urban environment. Uh, my personal opinion is that also we we will see the contribution of uh, uh, crowdsourcing, for example, from citizens, as well as uh, the contribution for smart buildings. So th there will be an integration sooner or later of uh, private 
information to the public. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now I have a question for Juan. Uh, you've explained the, the steps for the development of a smart city, right? Uh, how do you approach open innovation from a practical standpoint? Which are initiatives with uh, entrepreneurial companies, businesses? How do companies benefit from his smart city platform? Which kind of data is provided in the marketplace? And how this can, data can be consumed, utilized, exploited by companies? And how do you expect DPS to help her here? Sorry. Can you? Yes, One? thank you. Okay, great. Well, um, uh, now we, we have a, a, a similar approach that we have made in the past with the, the open data. We are publishing uh, more or less all the information that uh, currently is, is managed more or less automatically in the in the municipality uh, always uh, taking into account that sometimes we we have to anonymize information in order to follow the data protection laws and and so on and i think it's interesting to say that um, sometimes we 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 have to to retain some data of several externalized uh, municipal services because uh, that information is very uh, sensitive for those companies. I did, they don't want to publish the inner or the insights of their business. So this gives us a hint that that information is valuable for any com other company or in general for, for, for any company that want to make business about that. What we want to do is uh, mm, uh, progress step by step with uh, taking a lot, of, a lot of care. First, trying to create a, a critical mass of data at the municipality in order to dynamize, to, to tractorize the, the, ecosystem, the ecosystem and then uh, try to improve uh, things, trying to be um, cost effective and putting all the resources that are really needed be because we, we cannot forget that the, the resources come from the, from the municipality and, and therefore from the citizens. Okay, thank you very much. Andreas, to you, you talked about uh, open data projects with the target of creating an open data. And uh, once uh, up and running, will this platform be available for other cities and maybe on open source model? And how can other cities learn from your challenge, from what you faced in uh, Padua? <laughs> um, yeah. Is yeah, it funny? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> first, the easy answer to the first part. Um, yes, the complete platform um, will be um, published as, as open source from the technical side. Uh, including all um, documentation that is, um, let's say, needed to to build it up and um, to to run it uh, to a point uh, where we are now. So um, all the um, documentation, all the um, configuration, and so on, which was done in uh, Paderborn, will be published. Um, this is the one part. Um, the the other topic, um, the learnings from the process integration and so on. This is not so easy to to publish. Um, I think we we will try to to publish some let's say success stories how um, the we got the process work, but uh, the way to the success story um, will be very difficult to publish. So at the end, it will be something like these uh, success stories. Great, thank you. And David, uh, uh, in the real sense, last but not least, because uh, you had a great experience in Malaga, I really want to come there and use your <laughs> platforms and uh, apps. So, uh, data sharing. Uh, and the main challenge is, uh, of course, uh, sharing data and then make them used. And second, not only get them used, but also fully exploited, right? So, is do you have an experience on that? How can they be exploited by not just citizens, but enterprises and so on? Mm. 
So thank you, Dad. Uh, the thing is the the work to get uh, first when you open the data. For example, we we began in in 2013. Uh, it's very hard to people to know that uh, these data are available. And also, it's very important to make people to know that this data, uh, if they are going to use it, uh, for example, if a company is going to the, to spend a lot of time developing a, a system, you uh, should uh, give them the 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 calm. Uh, they, they should be I don't know how to say. The, they should know that this data are keep on going being there. So uh, we have developed a lot of se sessions. Uh, with yes. with citizens, we have, uh, for example, different kinds of conferences with data BRs, uh, where we try to to explain uh, that they can use the, our data. That if they use, uh, we are going to make promotion to to them. Um, and talking at the university, and with this, we are trying to to make an, an ecosystem of of uh, companies that can uh, develop uh, with our data. So yeah. it's, it's a hard work, but it's very interesting. Um, uh, it's be we are very proud when we find that someone ha are using our, our data. For me, it's very, this is really yeah. interesting. It is a real open innovation uh, among uh, all the stakeholders, right? So mm -hmm. uh, enterprises, uh, public administrations, and, and university, and you do that. OK, yeah, thank right. you very much. So thank now, thank you. We are almost at the end, and uh, it is a pleasure to to close with uh, two couple of, of, of speech now. The first one is from uh, Ulrich Halle. The is a CEO Power Foundation. So up to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Flavia, for this excellent uh, moderation and. Uh, Thank you to all of you who participated uh, in this Five Air Domain Day on e-government uh, today, where openness was one of the guiding principles. And um, Flavia, I very much liked the uh, quote you had from Einstein, which says, minds are like parachutes. They work best when open. And, yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, openness uh, here uh, by the different uh, participants by uh, our uh, different speakers and uh, I'm quite open and quite uh, proud of uh, the way how the Fiverr ecosystem is uh, working together, competitors who are working together uh, to create open source based solutions, open standards and uh, this is for the benefit of all end users here talking about governments, about uh, smart cities and uh, we saw also from Joao that how the, the core component of Fiverr, the context broker, became part of the strategy of the European Commission to create the digital single market. And uh, I don't know whether you recognize when uh, uh, Joachim uh, presented from the project Sefet for Cities, where also they did um, a ranking of the European countries and the benchmarking of these European uh, countries in a portfolio that there are uh, quite big differences. Leading countries like uh, Estonia, Finland and also Spain um, are ahead of this uh, competition of the countries and other countries which are not that uh, developed and uh, we as Fiverr Foundation, we are headquartered in Germany and I have to say, um, Germany definitely at the moment does not belong to the top countries in Europe when it comes to digitization of public services and when it comes to e-government. But uh, we are open uh, here in Germany, we are able to learn and uh, it makes sense to be open and to learn from others and we saw especially from uh, the two uh, cities in Spain, from uh, Santander and Malaga, really um, outstanding examples of uh, platforms of uh, digital and smart cities um, and uh, that gives you a bit of a feeling why Spain belongs to the top countries when it comes to digitization of uh, public services. Um, but what you could also see that there are some cities in Germany like the city of Paderborn uh, which uh, clearly is benefiting from 
um, the participation in this uh, competition called uh, Digital City three years ago in Germany when they created a digital strategy and simply started to implement this uh, strategy and the uh, open data platform which, which was uh, created in Paderborn is a very good example for this. And what's really um, an example and best practice uh, of Paderborn is uh, to provide this results as open source also to other cities um, like we saw it also in other examples and that's another benefit of an open source of an open tech uh, community like Maya. So with this uh, and as we are over time already um, thank you very much for your participation. I'm handing over for the final words to our Chief Marketing Officer, Christina. Yeah, so thank you, Ulrich. And um, I guess we had really a very, very exciting day, but I wanted to also bring some easiness into the whole thing and say this is this is ongoing and you can um, combine it with some interesting other, I don't want to say fun events, but, but really get togethers um, also digitally as we are going on with being present in smart cities and e-government topics. And the next really super upcoming event is the one in Berlin. Um, as it's digital, it's actually doesn't matter where it's coming from. But I wanted to let you know um, if you like to join um, at um, Smart Country Convention. So that's the place where we last year had also our summit. Um, they went completely digital. And by the end of this month, two days, they will follow up um, everything with really the, the, the latest information around smart cities and, and e-government um, insights. Uh, Fiverr is sponsored there, so this is absolutely exciting. And Ulrich will also be um, holding as one of, the, of, of, of some people in a group a really nice and high level um, round table around systems and of the system. And um, I guess we will learn also things that we will, as if I were first time, say there. I think Ulrich, I cannot say more. Uh, this is what we're planning on. So I can only invite to join and uh, you find all the details on the website. So this is the Smart Country Convention end of the month in Berlin. All right. Um, we obviously have a few other events uh, and while I'm however speaking and a little bit wrapping up, um, I would just like to ask my colleagues then to show um, our other events, but until we get there, um, let me just say the following. We had really a wide bridge from what we learned um, earlier today with Flavia and Zhao, and to build, build a bridge to then the use cases is not that easy, but I try to understand what the Filoush can be here, and Ulrich was speaking about openness. I think it's also um, about speed and about involvement of, of people. Okay, so when you think that the economy, both at a national and global level, is further going digital and with a tremendous space, on par with it, society and its whole and in, in its whole is often overwhelmed by this disruptive changes um, brought by technology. And we heard that um, earlier this today as well that governments cannot. Um, anymore just let's say throw their ideas into into the wind and expect that everybody's following they really need to um, see that society can follow and this is why governments actually no longer are only providing services to end users and here comes actually the change um, they are also looking more and more really uh, in depth to citizens and businesses. And so what I think what we're all asking or talking about is that it should look instead or additionally also into the enablement of people and um, particular sectors of, um, of the economy to become digitally savvy and to reach um, a full ICT's adoption in these sectors. And this, I think, can be a little bit the fil rouge of everything that um, we heard today. So we went a bit over time. Um, I think, however, it was worth it to really um, stay up to the very end. Um, also, I guess, because uh, David, I think everybody had really great presentation, but I think, David, you, you really set the benchmark for our next shows. <laughs> and, um, and they are coming. So here you have the calendar. Uh, with water, with mobility, we have circular economy, a health care day, 
smart industry, a lot around smart cities and agri-food and blue economy. And by the way, in December, we will have another mobility day. So it's a full calendar. It's worth it to check um, our speakers and the topics. And of course, we also accept you as a speaker. So if you want to bring yourself forward and ask, or if you have a great person that you would like to see in such an event, just let us know. Um, you can contact any person here in the, in the marketing team. With this said, I want to give a special thank you also to Flavia, who um, guided us today through almost three hours of exciting topics. And obviously, also special thanks to our media partners um, who always support us very greatly, uh, not only um, uh, in our press work, but also specifically to really promote these events. Yeah, so uh, here you have all the contacts. And what we want to make sure is um, go back to YouTube. We will send you the link. Um, if you are signed up on our newsletter, you get it anyway. If not, please do so and then you don't miss any of that and you find all everything of today online okay we will not distribute slides you heard that but we will show everything registered and you can have fun also sharing that with your colleagues and friends so back to flavia and thank you to everybody who joined today as a speaker and as a guest thank you i don't have anything to say just thank you thank you thank you very much because it has been a great experience for me to learn so, so many things and uh, see you next time.